Hi everyone, welcome to Kristen Kelly TV. So today I'm going to be doing a bad girl related story for you guys. However, this is not like a typical bad girl story. Um, this is actually a story about me and about mental illness. So if you're somebody who maybe is like triggered by mental illness, maybe this isn't the best video for you. Um, this is actually like a really difficult video for me to make. So please don't leave me any negative comments. I know it's, you can say like, oh, you know, like whatever, post stuff online. This for me is like a really serious topic. Um, and it's something that really nobody knows about. The only person who I've even talked about this with is my boyfriend. And that makes it even stranger that I'm like making a YouTube video for everyone to see about this. Why is this so hard to talk about? Um, all right, so I'm just gonna start from the beginning. Um, when I was in the bad girl's house, you know, it's like you're under a lot of pressure. There's like people around you everywhere. There's cameras in your face. There's people listening to you. You have a microphone on. So it's like a lot of pressure. Like you're literally like using the bathroom and there's a microphone on you listening to you. And you would be really doing anything. And there's always somebody like listening to you and like kind of misconstruing like what you say. Like I remember we went, when we were at, um, in Jamaica, I was like talking, there was like this guy who had like broken his leg or something. Um, I, like him and Brandy had gotten in a fight at some point. But I remember I was just like talking to him about like my breast implants and I was like, do you think my boobs are real or not? And then later one of the producers, when they were like interviewing me, you know, for the little like little interview clips they put in, he was like, oh, so you were talking to that guy that you liked. And I was like, what guy did I like? And he was like, oh yeah, like you were talking about your, and the way that he made it seem was that I was all like, oh my God, my breast implants and like, all like sexual with this guy when it wasn't like that at all. It was very like, like uh, just like a friendly like banter. Um, it wasn't like a sexual way. So it was just like things like that, you know? So you're like constantly misconstrued and things that you say, this is like so hard for me to talk about. Like things are like really misconstrued and like um, things that you say are taken out of context. And there's also like a lot of pressure on you like um you feel like you have to like look good you feel like you have to wear like a new outfit you feel like you know everybody's like talking about you or to you and it's like especially in the circumstance where that show is like drama based you know and you know that so you know like people are thinking like you know that like when a camera's following somebody they're probably like talking about somebody you know so you're like constantly in this kind of like weird atmosphere does that make sense like you're never just comfortable like you're never just like relaxed you're like always kind of on edge you're kind of like always like you're kind of always like thinking like um you know what's the next thing that's going to happen am am i getting enough tv time am i am i gonna come out looking bad am i come out Am I gonna come out, you know, looking like a whore? Am I gonna come out looking, embarrassing my family? Am I gonna come out, you know, um, doing this wrong and doing that wrong? And, you know, it's like, I remember at one point I was coming back from a hotel and one of the girls that was like on the crew was talking to me. And I was like, yeah, you know, like I just get scared. Like, what if I look a certain way? And she's like, oh, you don't have to worry about looking a certain way. She's like, now Leah, she looks like, awful you know with having threesomes and blah 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 and like and then later I was talking to Leah and I like told her what the girl said and Leah like burst into tears and I was like I just think it's important for me to tell you what like somebody from the outside is telling me you know and it was like you don't know how you're being perceived and even the way you're being perceived might not be the way that they edit you like you know, I talked about how Brandy is like really funny or was really, really funny. But the only times they really showed Brandy was like, you know, when she was like acting crazy and they wanted her to like look a certain way, you know? So you kind of always have that like 
in the back of your mind, you know, and at the same time, you're like, am I thin enough? Am I, do I look good enough? Am I, you know, is my skin look good enough? Is my hair look good enough? You're like always kind of, you're just being watched like 24 seven. And shows like the Kardashians or the Real Housewives or shows where even like 90 Day Fiance stuff where the people are in their own lives and then the TV crew comes in that is one way of having a reality show because you're in your own home, you are with your own friends, your own family, you have your own hairdresser, you have your own nail tech, you have your own eyelash tech, you you know where you live, you have your own car, you, you know what I mean? And they just come, they film for a few hours and they leave. When you're living somewhere, it's so different because it's like you're plucked out of your environment and you're living in a a house that's not yours. You're eating food from a grocery store that you don't normally go to. You know, you're having your hair done by different people. You're, you, your friends aren't here, your family's not here. Um, you don't have those like connections that you normally have. And even when you wanna make a phone call, you're being listened to. So even something as small as making a phone call just to talk to somebody can be, you know, cut up and put into a TV show. So it's, it mentally is like really draining and I've always had mental problems. Um, when I was really young, I was abused and I have post-traumatic stress from that. I had post-traumatic stress. I mean, I will always have it, but it was, it was extremely bad from the age of, I would say like, 15 until I was 30, 31. So about 15 years, like I had extreme post-traumatic stress. Like I would wake up with um, horrible flashbacks. I would, I was very, very disconnected. Like I would be talking to somebody about something like completely unrelated to anything. There would be no triggers. And all I could think about was I would, I would be having flashbacks and I would wake up having flashbacks and I would think about it all the time, like all the time. Like I remember being 11 years old and 11. So I was 10 turning 11 and it was my birthday. And I remember, and this is so sad. This is like so sad to even say, I was blowing out the candles. And I remember thinking like, God, just please don't make me have flashbacks anymore. I just don't want to wake up and have flashbacks because the way that post-traumatic stress works is that something horrible or many things, the one thing it happens to you and then your brain can't comprehend it. Like the way to think about it is if there's a conveyor belt and this is your brain, you know, so like your brain is this big machine and there's the conveyor belt and there's like little memories going through. So like some of the memories they go through and you save them, some of them just, you know, go off. But when it's post-traumatic stress, it's this huge, unbelievable traumatic memory and you can't break it down. You, you, you can't process it. And for me, I was so young that I didn't really understand what was happening. So at the time, my brain just kind of like filed it away. And then as I got older, I started realizing like what had happened to me and I started realizing like that that wasn't right and I started realizing all of these horrible things and things that were not normal things that I thought um, were, were normal behavior were, were was not and I realized like how much I had been abused and I realized all of these horrible things had happened to me and so I've never had really like um, a normal brain is what I would say. I'm also dyslexic. So my brain does not work the way everyone else's works. Um, and if you don't know what dyslexia is, it's a learning difference, you can Google it. So I'm dyslexic, I have post-traumatic stress and um, I've kind of never had a, I guess like a safe, like a safe person to talk to. Um, like my boyfriend is my safe person now, um, and I'm 34, uh, 
but for a really long time I did not have anyone to talk to and even like psychiatrists I didn't feel comfortable talking to and I really just when I was in high school I knew that I was sad but I didn't want to talk to anybody about why I was sad and I just wanted to not feel sad. So when I was 30, I think it was actually my 30th or my 31st birthday, I think it was my 31st birthday, I had um, gotten on antidepressant, antidepressant pills and so I've been on them now since then and my life is completely different. Like I don't wake up um, having post-traumatic flashbacks, I don't have um, like the way that I, my psychiatrist had described it to me is you will never, it's not like it's gonna erase anything from your brain, but you will wake up and you will be normal. You will not have flashbacks randomly, you know? Um, like I can have a conversation with somebody and not just think about horrible things. Um, and for me, that was like a dream come true having that happen so um but the thing about mental illness is i think when you talk about mental illness with people they automatically feel like there's something wrong with you and there is nothing wrong with you um yes i have these things that are wrong with me but i cannot control that um i didn't ask to be abused I didn't ask to have post-traumatic stress. That was just a symptom of my brain coping what, with, with what was happening and my brain helping me. And my depression that I have struggled with pr my entire life, um, that is not my fault. And what I'm about to talk to you about is also not my fault. And it's not your fault if you have similar issues and you don't have to be afraid to talk to people about it. And this is like another thing about mental health is that I think that we all kind of feel like, well, what if I talk to somebody about this and they lock me up? And that was really like a thought that I had had with what I'm about to talk to you about is that I was afraid like, well, what if I tell somebody this and they think I'm insane? And I think it's important to know that people who have mental health issues are not psychotic. They're not gonna like, Go crazy and kill somebody they're not gonna hurt themselves or others um it's just something that they're dealing with so and i feel like if you do not understand mental health um or if you're somebody who has never dealt with it then you think something like well how can you just kill yourself or how can you just go crazy and do this but you have definitely never been that desperate if you can't even understand how somebody could do that all right so Here's the bad girl story. So I was getting mic'd up and the people that would mic, everybody on the, the crew, they had these earphones and with the earphones, they could hear you. They could hear um, every, they could hear all the cats talking and they also could like hear each other if they needed to say something, you know, they'd be like, oh, blah, 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 do this, blah, blah. Um, like, okay, camera, whatever. But you could hear the cast. And many times, you know, I would be like, I remember one time Kat came back from getting mic'd and she was like, oh, that was so crazy. I could hear everything you guys were saying. Like we were all in another room and she was like, yeah, I could hear everything you guys were saying, like through the guy's um, earpiece while he was making me up. And so that was not uncommon that you could hear them. So I was getting my, so Erica and I at this point had had like many turbulent things happen and I was getting mic'd up and I heard Erica talking about me through the headphone. I heard her saying that I was a bitch that I was spoiled, that I didn't have any friends, and that my friend Sean was my only friend and he was the only one who wanted to come visit me because I don't have any friends and everybody hates me. And just saying like really derogatory and nasty things about me. 
so as she's saying this, I'm thinking like, why is she saying this? I thought we were fine. Like we've been really friendly. Like we had a really good chat last night. Like we have had no issues. Like I can't believe she's saying this. And also I can't believe she's saying this in the room with Leah and Kat and like nobody's defending me. And it was like all the girls were in the same room together getting their, um, they're doing their makeup and their hair because we were going out. And I was like so hurt that she was talking about me. So I started walking away from the guy and this other person that worked like on the crew was like, Kristen, are you okay? And I was like, yeah, you know, it's just like, I just heard Erica talking about me and I'm so bothered by that because I thought that we were, you know, okay now. And it's like, I just feel like you never know these girls, you know, it's like you talk to them and you're your friends and you have like a good conversation and you think everybody's your friend. And then the next day, you know, you hear them talking bad about you. And he was like, oh, you know, it's okay. Like that's life and blah, blah, blah. So like I walked away from him and I go into the room and it's like all the girls are in this room and I'm like, Erica, I just heard you talking about me. Like, I thought we were friends. Why are you saying all this stuff about me? About like how my only friend is my friend Sean and calling me a bitch and like saying all this bad stuff about me. And everyone in the room like literally like turns and like looks at me and they're like, what? And I was like, I just heard you talking about me on, the, on through like the guy's um, headphone. And everybody was like, nobody was talking about you. We haven't even been talking. We literally have all just been sitting here in silence, like doing our makeup. And I was like, what? And then Kat was like, Kat was like, bitch, I have been sitting here and nobody was talking about you. And I was like, so at first I, I thought they were lying. And then they really, all of them were like, nobody was talking about you. And I, and when Kat said that, I was like, and Kat was even like, girl, what are you talking about? Like, have you gone crazy? Like, you know? And I was like, oh, wow, like they must have been listening to like old audio. And I heard that through the guy's headphone. But later, like literally a long time later, maybe like six years later, I realized that nobody was talking about me and that I had like a psychotic episode. And I really thought that I heard that conversation but that conversation never happened. And what's the scariest part about that is that it feels so real. Like when that happened, I would have put my life on that that had happened. I would have put my life on the fact that Erica had said that, that there were other people in the room. I heard what she was saying, like I heard it, it was, so real that it it gives me a better understanding of somebody who is you know schizophrenic and who hears things all the time or who sees things all the time that are not real because I really thought that that happened and when it happened it's it was so weird to me that I was like oh it must have been old audio I really did not even in my mind comprehend that that conversation did not happen and that that was um, completely in my brain. I really, there was no way that that, that happened to me. So um, years later, so that happened and I believe that that was the first and like only time that that happened where I heard people talking about me but I don't know because I really can't tell you because the way that it felt to me is it felt so real. It felt so real that it's terrifying because you're like, well, what is real and what is not real kind of thing. So that happened. Years later, um, I was prescribed sleeping pills because of my post-traumatic stress, it was like really hard for me to sleep. So I prescribed sleeping pills. And, um, oh my God, what were the name of the sleeping pills? Uh, it was the same sleeping pills that Rosie O'Donnell took and then like tweeted a bunch of racist stuff and said that she did it because of that. Um, 
oh, I forget the name, but they were like very, very common. It's like still probably really common, but I was completely addicted to sleeping pills. Like if I did not take sleeping pills, I could not sleep. I'm not like that anymore. Thank God. Actually, I stopped taking them because I got pregnant and have not taken them ever again. And so happy. So when I would take them at night, I would kind of start hearing voices as I was falling asleep. And this was like being in a crowded lunchroom, but so you could not hear any specific thing that anyone was saying, but you could hear voices. Like you could hear like kind of like muffled talking or whatever. And I had actually Googled it and it said that that was actually like um, a symptom of like taking this particular sleeping medication and I guess medications in general sometimes with sleeping medications that as you're falling asleep you kind of like hear sounds and stuff like almost like people talking but not like specific things that they're saying so it really did not like freak me out and then one night I took it and I was like laying in bed and this was like my ex-boyfriend from a long time ago and I said to him, do you hear people talking? And he was like, what? And I was like, I like hear people talking. And then I fell asleep. And he later the next day told me, he was like, do you remember talking to me last night when you were falling asleep? And I was like, no. And he's like, you said to me that you heard people talking when you were falling asleep. And I was like, oh yeah. So I actually Googled that and it said that that's like, you know, can be from the medication and blah, blah, blah. And he's like, that is not normal. And he's like, you like the he was so freaked out by that that it kind of made me be like oh maybe I should have cared more when I like had originally had that symptom and I really was like oh whatever normal normal um also I have to say that I'm like very psychic and I've always been like that and as I got older some of the things that I realized was am I as psychic as I believe I am or do I have schizophrenia and so I went to three different doctors thinking that I was schizophrenic and all of them said I was not. But you can have like episodes, you know, like something could happen to you. Um, and it doesn't mean that you're schizophrenic. It just means that that happened, you know, like, um, like the incident with hearing Erica talk, okay? So another time, this is so strange. So, you know who Chris Pratt is? He's an actor. So I used to go to this gym that like a lot, of, when I lived in LA, that like a lot of celebrities and stuff went to. And I was listening to my headphones and I was coming out of the elevator and I just screamed shut up. Like it was like, I can't, a hundred percent pinpoint exactly what I was saying it to but it was like sounds in my head or like voices in my head it was something it was like I was listening to my music and I was thinking about something and it was almost like I, I wasn't yelling at a person to shut up but I was like telling myself to shut up but the way that I did it, I really thought that it was like internal. I did not even realize that I was like screaming it out loud, but I literally like screamed shut up. And Chris Pratt heard me and turned and looked at me and had this like horrified, like scared face. And I was just like, and walked off. And I literally was so embarrassed that I got in the car and I sat there and I was like, did that really just happen? I was like, was that Chris Pratt? And then I was like, did I just scream shut up? Like if he had not looked at me and gave me that look, I honestly do not even know if I would have been able to like comprehend that I did that out loud. Cause it was so weird. It was like so weird. It was just, it was so strange that I don't even know why I did it. It was like, it was so weird. It was just so, so weird. So, um, I can't believe I'm telling you guys the story. This is just so nuts. Okay. So after that happened, like, long time after I got pregnant. So when I got pregnant, I stopped taking, um, I continued taking my um, depression medication 
but I, did, and I, but I, so I continued taking my depression medication because my doctor told me to, but I didn't, but I did stop taking my um, sleeping medication. And my pregnancy in total was like normal. Everything was totally normal with the pregnancy. After I had my baby, so there was like this thing, it's um, essentially like pregnancy psychosis like things happen because of all of like the hormones going through your body and the changes that are happening and the lack of sleep because you have a newborn so you can um you can hear things it's like pregnancy brings on a lot of different psych, psych like psychologists in general you know agree that pregnancy and having a baby brings up a lot of things like you can have um, pregnancy psychosis and all of this stuff so after I had my baby, um, this is just so, so strange. So Chris and I, um, were at the hospital, you know, we did everything for our baby, you know, like for the birth certificate and they had me do it and they have him do it. And then after, so we sign it, you know, she has his last name and stuff. Cause we are at some point going to get married. And then after we had the baby, like Chris and I were fighting and fighting and fighting. And this is something like, if you have a baby, I'm sure you can relate to. And if you don't have a baby, this is going to happen to you. You literally lose your mind, like right after you have a baby, because there are so, first of all, you're so tired. Like you don't sleep. You have to feed your baby every three hours, like literally every three hours you have to feed your child. So you never fully sleep. You never get like a good rested sleep. And we were just fighting about little things. So um, when I had the baby, they had to um, cut like from my vagina to my booty hole. They had to cut. And so I had stitches. And like after we were out of the hospital, I had to sit on a dough pit. Like I could not, I could not sit unless I was sitting on this donut. So we walked, so we had walked to the car to get in the car and I forgot the donut. And I was like, babe, can you go back and get the donut? And he was like, I'm not going back and getting the donut. And I'm like, I literally just had a baby for you. My, I'm like, I have stitches and I can't walk. Can you go get the donut? And he was like, fine. And he went and got the donut so I could sit. And I just remember being like so mad about that. Like, how dare you? Like, I just had a baby for you. Like all of this stuff, you know, like how dare you like do that, blah, blah, blah. So I got, um, over that clearly and then like a week later still fighting or whatever so chris and i i'm on i'm in bed and he texted me and i like called him and i was like screaming at him something like i was just so mad and i was like i can't believe you know like i gave my baby your last name and like we're fighting and blah 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 and then we hang up the phone and my phone rings and i answer it and it's this lady from the hospital and she's like hi, Kristen, this is so-and-so from, you know, the hospital, blah, blah, blah. Um, we need you and Chris to come back because like one of you didn't sign something. Pretty much what they said was that one of us didn't sign the paper or one of, there was some kind of mistake happened on our, on our paper and one of us didn't sign it. And we, I was like, okay, thanks. And then I got off the phone and I was like, you know what? That serves him right. Like I should take his name off of that because now I guess it's not even, you know, the birth certificate's not even like real. So I should go back there and I should just change her last name to my last name, you know, blah, blah, blah. And then Chris and I clearly like made up and we had to go back to the hospital to bring her for like an appointment. And when we went, I was like, oh babe, let's go up, you know, stairs to this thing because they called me and told me that we needed to sign something for the birth certificate. And he's like, I thought we already did all that. And I was like, I know, me too. So we go up and I talk to the lady and I'm like, yeah, somebody called me about signing the birth certificate, like something was wrong. And the lady was like, really? She was like, oh, let me look. So she looked through it and she goes, no, everything's fine. Birth certificate's normal. And I was like, really? Um, well, like so-and-so had called me and she was like, oh, I'm the only one that works in this department. I didn't call you. Um, are you sure like it was this hospital or blah, blah, blah? And I was like, yeah, thanks. That's so weird. And as we were walking away, all I could think was, did I really talk to someone? Like, because to me, it was a hundred percent real. Someone called, I answered the phone, I talked to them. But to this day, I don't know if that really happened because 
it was like Chris and I were fighting about this and I was like so mad that I gave the baby his last name and then immediately the lady called I answered and then I was like good you know like not gonna have his last name anyway now and then when the lady said to me she was like no I'm the only one who works here it was it literally like the my first thought was like oh my god did I really have a conversation with that lady because the way that like the pregnancy psychosis works it's like you have schizophrenia really for like a certain amount of time and I really was like did I really have that conversation like I don't even know um so since that happened nothing else has happened those are the only um the only things that have happened so it is something that I think about and it is something that in the future, like if more things were to happen, um, I definitely would see another specialist about it. But I did have three doctors tell me that I don't have schizophrenia. It was just like things, you know, happened. Um, so I'm making this video because I want you to know that you're normal and I'm normal and it's okay to have things like that happen. Um, it doesn't make you any less of a person. And maybe if something like this has never happened to you, maybe this will help you realize um, mental illness, you know, a little differently. So this was really hard for me to talk about. Um, actually, this was most definitely one of the hardest videos I've ever made. And I think it's because I'm being extremely vulnerable in a way that this isn't stuff that people would normally talk about. And... I just want you to know that it's okay to talk about it with people. All right, I'll talk to you guys later. Bye.